Hi, I'm Paige Hamilton from Helmet, and we're going to look at my rig, my, my US rig to be specific. Uh, this guitar is my original ESP um, that's been busted and put back together um, many times. You can see the guy, the fat guy from the Led Zeppelin album cover, Physical Graffiti, is in this hole where he removed the volume knob and uh, uh, this, the tone, you know, the pickup switch we took out because I just used one volume knob. This has been kind of put back together because I smashed it a couple of times like an idiot and uh, now it's my favorite guitar like my uh, that's my baby but uh, there's also this is a uh, good tech years ago put this spring in the where the neck pickup goes and so I tell people it's the in guitar reverb system it's not it's just a rusty crappy spring that looks cool so uh, Floyd Rose obviously which is an amazing tremolo system if, if you've any, uh, used him the locking trem up here um, we, I, I removed the, the back plates on my guitars so I can do uh, some of my Casper Brotsman feedback things with the, with the springs. It sounds really cool. Um, I'll spare you right now because it's loud. It'll be so loud. I um, have this original dog pile sticker that's still on here from our, our buddy uh, Tom who had this company clothing company a million years ago that gave us a lot of stuff. I just love the sticker. So yeah, that's kind of it. I have a, he's been using Diodario since the dawn of man. I love them. These are uh, the, the NYXL set. It's a 10 to 52. Um, I guess they call it light, light top heavy bottom or something like that. Um, and I'm tuned down to C and, and uh, this, this for the, about the last 10 years. So CGC FAD is the tuning. They stay in tune. They, are, they sound incredible. I've tried, a, a, you know, other strings when I was younger, but these I just love these strings. You know, they just work great for me. Um, we change them every other show. Steve Blucher, the genius at Demarzio, designed these for me. Probably ninety-two or three, I'm gonna guess. Um, unfortunately, they don't call them the Page Hamilton. They call them the Air Zone. And I was like, man, you know, and like uh, uh, Alan Holdsworth started using them after Steve made this. Steve came to our basement in New York, our, our rehearsal space, and I had a, a TC Parametric EQ, TC Electronics, and we would just play, I would play and dial stuff in and I'd describe to him, because I have no technical, I'm a, I'm a nincompoop, I'd be like, it's a 3K, I don't know. I just, I like to feel the high, the high stuff, like percussiveness at the top of the guitar. I don't, I don't want it to sound thin and weedly. Um, and just like, I, for the chords that we use, since we use, I'm gonna turn the gate off, uh, uh, stuff has to be clear and so if I be playing a chord like this it's like it's like a major 7 sharp 11 chord with an open E string which gives it a 6 or 13 and it's if you did if you didn't have like your strings pickups guitars amp everything's sort of kind of perfectly dialed in you lose stuff turns to mud and we'll talk about the amps in a, in a bit but I've played you know I have some old Marshalls that I love and I use them for recording but these Fryettes just you know are, are incredible. So that's the kind of a combination of the things. The pickup, um, I've been playing it since Steve designed it. I want to say it's like '92 or something like that. It's Evidence um, audio cables. They're made by Tony Farinella in uh, out in California. And I am I'm such a, a geek that I spent. This was in Atlanta, Georgia. About it had to be about 20 years ago. I sat on stage and I had my full rig set up, and we replaced each cable, including the the AC cables on the amps. Put in regular AC cables, Tonys. I could hear a difference. Tried uh, the, the cabling between the, uh, you know, speaker cables. Pulled the, uh, put regular speaker cables in, Tonys. Tonys are better. Uh, guitar cables, same same thing. And he um, um, had for uh, I used his stuff in the studio, but he had these it's kind of stiff. Um, braided cables back then, I, which I still use, but they weren't great for live because you need more flexibility on stage. So he designed this cable for me um, for, for stage. And I like, uh, I have an L jack going into my rig so it can fit in between pedals and then a straight jack here. And I, some, some are L to L, but I have to have an L jack on one side of, the, of all my cables. So um, yeah, they're there. I, I, I can, you know, I know it's a minor detail to some people but you can hear you hear the difference and I'm super picky about the way things sound so all these things I think kind of contribute to the the, the the sound of the rig and you know yeah I think helmet's kind of known for the guitar sound so it's a it's it's important and I have I've played so much gear for over the last uh, next year will be the 30th year of the band I played so much gear and this is I've been using this setup now for the last I want, I want to say 20 years maybe something like that so we did make a, um, ESP did a, a Paige Hamilton model of this 
original guitar, so it's like a relic. And we sent the guitar to Japan. I reluctantly sent the guitar to Japan for a couple of months when we were off tour. And they did every kind of, they tried to do every nick and, and, and whoops, shit, I thought I had it muted already. Uh, uh, and so we recreated it, uh, this, this guitar. And that's what I leave in Europe um, and take. That's what I fly with. This guitar got lost, lost once. Uh, coming back from Mexico City, and my tech didn't tell me for a year. So I, after that, I was like, never flying with it again. It, it only does goes in the U.S. So don't tell people in Europe that. So they're like, is that the original? I'm like, yeah. So um, this this guitar has tunes specifically for a, a, a one song called Sinatra from the Strap It On record. It's a um, ESP Horizon Custom, and th these are just phenomenal sounding guitars. I, I love them. They're they're ne uh, neck through. Um, and I have the same pickups in all my guitars, the DiMarzios. Um, the same thing, I tell, to had all the electronics taken out, just a volume knob, because I'm too much of an idiot to, to you know, deal with other switches and knobs and stuff. So uh, this is tuned to, uh, like the, the Sinatra tuning has the, the B string tuned up a minor third. So it gives you these, uh, you can do these cool uh, unison things. Can't really hear it. And that's, okay. these are just like simple chords that we, Uh, anyway, yeah, there's a, 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 a apparently a pretty cool Deftones cover of the song, which I have yet to hear, but uh, so it's kind of flattered. It's one of my favorite songs, but this guitar is only for that song. This guitar is another uh, uh, Horizon Custom. It's a it's a kind of a purplish black almost, uh, and um, I love this guitar. They ESP originally. Um, I had I put some was trying these sustainer pickups, and so I had this guitar set up for mo for the movie work I do, um, and and I ended up kind of uh, I, I love the guitar so much. I said you know it was only getting you sitting at home and getting you know in, in, in the studio. I decided to to strip it down and put and now the newer Demarzios the same model have the name on them, but um, and it did the same thing. Stripped all the electronics out. You can see the extra uh, holes and stuff for the the sustainer pickup. Um, and I still use the sustainer pickups, I just put them in a different guitar in the LTD, so I have two of those for movie work. Um, and yeah, I just finished a cool movie called Inherit the Viper uh, with the great composer Patrick Kearse, if you guys keep, keep an eye out for it. But uh, yeah, and this has a Wilkinson tremolo system, which is another really amazing tremolo system. Um, and uh, I, you know, I like it. The, 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 the Floyd is... Floyd has a certain feel that I just I really love, but these are a lot more practical and easier to deal with and easier for text to, because there's there's no locking headstock. It's just a, um, I think it's a, uh, I forget what the nut is made out of. They they did special uh, things with, so there's less resistance or something. I don't know. It's got these um, spurzels on them. These tuners are really good. I love them. Uh, yeah, this guitar is is was one of my mains for a long time, and now I now I, I, I rotate. Uh, between these three guitars for the how many stuff this this was the original Paige Hamilton signature model that we did, uh, I kind of co-designed with ESP um, I stuck sort of with the Horizon custom des uh, body they had at the time because I didn't want to I, I just didn't want it to be like oh my guitar has to you know have boobs it'd be some special thing that they they spend you know thousands of dollars you know making so I wanted it to be an accessible instrument that was practical and I originally my original idea was I wanted it to be a guitar that I could use for everything so I had all the electronics in but as you can see again I was like yeah I just it's too much for me to deal with on stage I just volume knob that's it so they plug this up for me I leave one of these in Europe as well um, it has the same very similar to the black purple horizon custom it's got the, the Wilkinson the De, uh, DiMarzio um, Air Zone, I think they call it the Air Zone or Tone Zone Light or something like that. Sprizzles, uh, and I, yeah, whoops, sorry. And uh, I do the same thing with all the, uh, you know, the, the plates. I take the plates off so I have access to the springs, which is, a, say, Casper Brotsman, who and I made an album called Zulu Time about 25 years ago, and Casper turned me on to so many exciting guitar things. You know, kind of he, he adapted stuff that Hendrix did and whatever, and it's just, it's, you know, it's fun, fun to make noise. The same thing we pull the neck pickup out and uh, oh the finish I'll, sh I'll get to the finish here in a second there's a guitar that I'm going to show you that was made for me by Paul Reed Smith and uh, a, a great artist in New York City called Eric Sanko who's uh, has a, a played with the lounge lizards um, and has a great band called Skeleton Key he also is an amazing uh, puppeteer 
and just a great artist and he did an aluminum leaf uh, top on the guitar for me and we tried to kind of recreate that with a brushed aluminum feel it's too expensive to do aluminum leaf for you know for you know a guitar that was going to be mass produced but uh yeah I'm, I'm proud i'm i moved i had the electronics um moved back a little bit so they're kind of out of my way so i had access to the to the whammy that was um you know just one of the things along with the finish that i that i um i wanted to do with my first signature model so yeah this is the original uh page but i think um, yeah, my, I, my, my original idea is like, I'm, not, I'm just going to sign my name on the back, have my signature on the back, and then I, I, you know, every, this is the only guitar with the SIG on the back, the rest of them have it on the front where, they, where it should be. I don't know, I, got, I was trying to get too clever. So back in the 90s, uh, there, were, there were, you know, a, a lot of guitar companies I was talking to, and, and I had, at ESP were the first guys that showed faith in us when we, we just had a punk rock 7-inch called Born Annoying out, and they... I've just been loyal to them forever, but I do appreciate, uh, uh, you know, I have so many cool guitars, Gibsons and Fenders and Paul Reed Smiths. And so I kept getting these Paul Reed Smiths and they were really nice guitars, but it didn't quite work for me. So we have this new model we think you'll like called the McCarty. I took this guitar, my Fuchsia or Magenta uh, thing to the Paul Reed Smith factory and sat around and I said, look, this guitar is, sounds incredible. And they were, they couldn't believe that a factory made guitar in Japan could sound so good but they acknowledged it and I said uh, but I said like, I love your guitars as well so they designed this McCarty for me they made me two McCarty's uh, uh, I don't know where the tremolo is right now but uh, I, I, I like a whammy bar on my guitars so they made me this one and my as I said my friend and artist Eric Sanko put this aluminum leaf so it's literally uh, thin sheets of aluminum that you place on the top of the guitar and then so we had to finish finish over it so it doesn't uh, peel, peel off. This was a brand new guitar when I when they made it for me, obviously, and it's just completely corroded and cool looking. The 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 uh, the, the, the bridge and uh, the, uh, the uh, I had Paul sign it for me, um, custom foil for Page Hounds was cool, and then I had Eric, the artist, sign it here. But it, I just had him sign it after we finished over, so it wore off in about two weeks, which is idiotic on my part. So I don't know what are you gonna do. Um, this these uh, PRS. I've seen they don't use this these these tuners anymore. And I love these tuners. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I've seen newer PRSs, and I don't. It's a. Uh, I mean, they're. They, I'm sure they're great. I just love these. They're so fast to change and easy to deal with. And uh, this guitar, I is uh, tuned to standard. This is my uh, my main movie guitar. Um, and when I'm not using the the, the ESP LTDs with sustainers, like if I'm going to do guitaristic kind of things. Um, this is I use and this and I travel with this guitar goes everywhere in the world with me if I'm producing a band or anywhere because it's tuned standard and I do if I do a jazz gig this is what I use uh, I have a case you know a, a, a beautiful SKB case that's a flight case for it that they make specifically for this guitar uh, or for PRS shapes uh, and I love I love the instrument and ESP's really cool about it they're like hey you know like we we don't want you to do any ads with anybody else but but it's obviously you're going to play a bunch of different guitars i've got i own john entwistle's 1965 candy apple red fender 12 string that i play on every helmet album at some point um i own a 1952 es-175 gibson i have a 1936 l00 gibson acoustic because i got obsessed with robert johnson i got a 1961 les paul sg jr that's gorgeous I used on the across the universe movie so I have a bunch of guitars but ESP I'm a that's you know, those are my my guys my, my guys and guys and gals I love that company so yeah this is an, a, a, a beautiful instrument and I play it through okay, I guess we can kind of go to the amps now there's a short jazz guitar intro to a song called beautiful love on the Betty album we don't do it every night obviously in the Betty tour we did it every night but I have this little Fender super champ I brought on this tour because it's easy to easy to, to deal with. I got this brand spanking new in 1986 at Sam Ash in Queens. Um, and it's just a fantastic little amp. I actually, for, uh, it's 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 not a high powered amp and I have a, a Fender, my friend Mike Tempesta hooked me up with the George Benson um, deluxe uh, you know model, which is like a hot rod deluxe with some George Benson things and it sounds amazing and that's what I, usually use but on this tour since we're not doing the Betty album and we this song I do like maybe once a week I thought it's easier for everybody to deal with a small amp we knew we were sharing gear with our buddies prong so just try to keep this 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 is a little a little more streamlined so um, that brings us to my main amps which are, are, are fry ads a relief I have I have three of these ultra lead pitbull ultra lead heads they're 100 watts um, I run them on, on half power 
So um, I just, because I, I like the sound better, so I'm only use, actually using two power tubes. They're KT88 tubes um, and, and uh, the, the power tubes. So you're running on just the two outside tubes, which is convenient because if you ever, if the tube shits the bed, you can just pop the two middle to the outside and you're kind of covered. So I always, I always travel with spare tubes anyway, because you just never know. And, um, uh, and I have, I, I, I've, I have settings for different, uh, you know, different different stages because you might be in like an Enormo dome opening for Guns N' Roses or you might be in a, you know, 300 seat club. So um, obviously you don't want to be louder than the PA, which I could be. Um, and uh, right now I'm just uh, running t t uh, two cabs. These are Steve's speakers in here that he designed. Uh, I, I think they're made by Thane, uh, produced by Thane, I think, but don't quote me on that. Or Thane, 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 Thane I, uh, yeah, they, they were, uh, yeah, he's tried several speaker designs over the years and several, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, shops to pr produce them. And these have been really, really great. And he, uh, I go to Steve's fairly regularly, as I did with the guitar cables uh, for Tony's stuff. I, uh, I've been to VHT, to Fryette, and when sat, and we have put, uh, I've run like half stack, full stack, two full stacks. Uh, power amp. I have one of their 2150 power amps that ideally if we were playing big uh, big uh, halls every night with you know like say Guns N' Roses or whoever Nine Inch Nails we toured with um, I would use uh, uh, the rack with the power amp and and, and, so, and I ran I went through every single cab and, and it's, it's the best sound is to run uh, a cab off a head cab off a head and then have uh, the, the two bottoms powered by each side of the power amp so each amp has its uh, each cabinet has its own you know power output it's just I, and I, I know it sounds crazy but it's you hear there's a di you know, difference in clarity and power and it's just a great sound so this is basically that but stripped down a little bit um, running running two cabs off the same head this is just my spare head I keep it here so if anything happens you know god forbid I'll knock on wood uh, you just you know pop the cables, boom, 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 and it, it's super quick, easy to get it get it going. And uh, it's a three channel head, um, and I use all three channels: the the rhythm channel for rhythm stuff for the song, the lead channel for solos, and the clean channel for things like uh, Sam Hell or uh, enemies that ha that have a, that re require a clean tone. It has a really, really, really great uh, six band EQ that if I want to get like feedback things, I use the crap out of this on movie stuff, like, cause you can just dial things in. Like I did the movie, um, I did a song with Bono from U2 for a, song, a movie called The Good Thief. And I, I pulled out all the, all the bottom end, 100, 100 and 250 and, and boosted like, you know, two, three and 5K and, and ran it through this. I'll show you guys in a minute that PS3 uh, boss pedal and got this, it was a, we we're doing a Frank Sinatra song called That's Life. And uh, it just was a really cool, weird sound. It was, it was, so it's a kind of a jazz tune, but we didn't want a jazz tune sound. We wanted something in interesting and different. And so this amp, I've just like said, I've been, I, I feel like I can get a million and one sounds out of it. Um, the only sound I can't get out of it is the Fender sound and the Fender reverb sound. So for jazz stuff, I'm just like Fender all the way. And I, I break Steve's balls all the time. I'm like, you, these are the best rock amps on the planet, but for they're not great for jazz. So, um, but you know, anyway, I've been uh, using these Clayton picks, Steve Clayton in Ashland, Oregon, which is uh, uh, ten miles from my hometown in Medford, uh, for forever. These are bass picks essentially. They're 1.52 millimeters thick. Um, I love them because I can feel them. I have uh, I, I had a, an accident uh, a million years ago and sliced all the nerves in the palm of my hand. So I had ten stitches inside and ten on top. So this is all dead here. And um, so these I can feel really well if it's cold or whatever, and I love the sound of them. They really, um, they I don't know, they're just percussive, and they just they're, they're they're they they kind of spring off the string in a great way, and just I just love the way these picks feel. And so um, I have a, the simple helmet logo on there, and then Steve has his uh, Clayton logo at the bottom, and they're I love them. They're great. They were actually turned uh, Buzz uh, Osborne from the Melvins turned me on to Clayton picks. He's been using them forever. He's his his aren't as thick as mine, but but he I played them. I oh, these are great, great feel, you know. So uh, yeah, they kind of smooth and uh, kind of almost rounded off the each each corner. So it just has a really really nice feel to it. 
Uh, my in-ears, um, I, I, I use when I, uh, we had in-ears done, the first time I ever used them was when I played with David Bowie on the Hours Tour in 1999, and it was awkward for me at first, but then I got so used to them, to being able to uh, be specific about what I wanted to hear in my ears, what I need. And um, my great buddy John Tapesta, who played in Helmet for three years and is a drummer in the cult for the last 11 or 12 years, um, said, hey, this company, Jerry Harvey Audio, are making these amazing ears and they would love to work with you. So I went in and got the molds done and, and uh, they're really, I, I love the way they do their cases too, but they, they've been really good, good to me. They're great folks and the ears sound incredible. I don't know how many drivers they have or whatever. They're probably kind of gross and dirty right now because I've been on the road for a while, but yeah. They're um, they're really cool. I know it's great. I just I like simple, clear, and you know, clear cable. And I buy the extra long cable, get the extra long cables because I'm kind of tall. So uh, I don't like I don't want my head stuck if I can't, you know. But anyway, they're great, man. I love them. I really appreciate their their stuff. This is my U.S. rig, and I have it's a, it's the switcher was made by the genius Bob Bradshaw, um, and I have two. Uh, I have two Bradshaw rigs, one that I leave in Europe and one that I leave here in the U.S. This particular uh, rig has a, a six-space rack. I use the, this Digitech, which I control with a, a pedal up, up there. This is a, a, a Prescription Electronics in Portland, Oregon are amazing, and they modded this outbox for me, and it just sounds incredible. The guy's a, a genius. Uh, uh, and uh, Jack Brosser, I, I, God, I hope I, I haven't talked to him for years, but uh, MXR, the bass octave for the enemy's verse, um, NS2 noise presser, Bosgate, um, XXL from Tech 21 in New York, another really great, cool company. Uh, it's Bob's um, regulated power. This guy, uh, this guy is unfortunately not in business anymore in Australia, the Sonic Alienator by Frostwave, and I have his, M, his Korg MS20 pedal as well, which is the circuitry from that, that synth. And they're, the guy is incredible. I called him to try to get another one, and he said, I'm not in business anymore, and unfortunately. This is a, 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 a Maxon. I got this from my buddies um, at Godlike um, uh, Pedals in New York. Uh, it's just a really great analog delay, just really in incredibly great sounding. Uh, this is my, this is the, my, my patch bay uh, that Bob uh, designed, and I'll show you the, 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 the board. Obviously, line in, line out for the loop. Um, you know, preamp output, my input, and the switcher. Um, this is my original digital delay that I got in 1986 in uh, New York. Also, I believe it's Sam Ash Queens, but I can't remember for sure. Um, and I used it on Strap It On, Meantime, Betty, every single album. And I, it's, I, this is the only rig it lives in now. I love this delay. Um, this is a really cool TC M M1XL um, that I started using when I was playing with Bowie because uh, I can I can just get a variety of you know verb and delay and chorus sounds or whatever. Obviously, Furman. Furman power supply, which is you know, essential to regulate your power. Um, everything plugs into the back, and uh, so it's all off the same, same circuit. Here's, uh, this controls the whammy. Um, this is a Stevie, uh, I always wanted a tube, uh, I always wanted a buffer to, uh, to, to fix the impedance when we uh, run pedals, and Steve is the uh, first guy that designed what I think is just the best buffer. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the valve, it's called the valvulator. And it's got a little 12 AX7, uh, say a low noise tube in it, and it powers my stuff that's on the board. Um, this is uh, a, a, a Jeffrey Tees is a, a genius when it comes to wah wah pedals, and this so his circuitry is in this Vox reissue. I have an original 1974 Vox wah, but I don't travel with it for obvious reasons, um, and it's it's great. But th this is a Jeffrey Tees modded wah uh, boss everything they make is works and is great and amazing. This is the, the PS5 pitch shifter. I use this to, to do kind of goofy Middle Eastern whammy, whammy stuff. These guys, uh, Peterson make, is in my estimation, pretty much the best tuner, uh, best tuners out there. And we started working with them a couple of years ago. Uh, the rep was in Chicago, brought us a bunch of stuff. And so this is, uh, this is my tuner. I have another one on this board I'll show you in a minute that it's also can be a DI. So. I use it if I'm playing an acoustics thing in the in the studio. That's my DI. So you, you just have to switch on the back where you can have it you, uh, monitor the tuning or or have it muted or uh, you use it as a DI. So I monitor so I can see notes if I'm something's open. I want to hit it. This controls the Sonic Alienator. Uh, I mean, I mean, just uh, no, it doesn't control. It just puts it in and out of the loops. It's a separate loop for that thing that I had because I had Bob modify this. This is Bob's um, an older RS10. Um, it's a great switcher. Now I have an RS5 that's in Europe that I leave in Prague. 
um, and he's got some new systems that I'm going to try to see him at the end of the tour and talk about. But this is, I, did, I don't know anybody that makes better stuff than Bob, I, and I just love working with him. He's funny as hell and he's a genius. Um, and so this, this, this is how I access all my pedals and switch my amp and everything. So as a singer, you don't want to be tap dancing up here. So I can, I have, I leave all my rhythm sounds on every bank. Um, is uh, I'm left footed, so it's it's uh, here's you know here's the the patch rhythm channel with the boost on and a noise gate. So every single uh, every single bank has that same thing. I won't. Um, I'll go quickly. I'll turn the amp on standby and show you. So um, if I'm uh, all my lead lead sounds uh, are are on on the other three um, levels. So so if I'm say in bank one. Um, this is going to give me the chord, uh, digital delay, lead channel in the XXL. Uh, this is the outbox chord, lead channel. This is, uh, you know, you can see kind of each, you know, XXL chord key with different settings. It also MIDI switches, changes the programs on, the, on all the MIDI devices. Um, uh, this is, I'm not using the Lexicon MPX-G2 anymore. That's the, the, the M1XL, which has never changed. The, and the Boss Reverb is, uh, this is actually the, the analog delay. Uh, so go over here. This is kind of a little satellite board that I made after we did the Dead to the World album because I had a lot of guitar sounds that I that I wanted to get like backwards things and started using this Eventide H9. So I have a couple of these. Uh, I just bought, go for the Max one, and they're just incredible, incredible. It has the I have a time factor on my Europe board, and I've been using that for so long and loving. It. And there's a mod factor, and um, it has all four of their um, pedal. Uh, devices which are like a bigger thing in in this and so all these algorithms are available to me and I um, since this uh, in my Europe rig I, Bob uh, before he moved out of LA modded it so it's con it's controlled by my my switcher so it's all MIDI but this US rig I haven't had a chance to go see Bob in Pennsylvania yet so um, I have to do do all this stuff manually you, you modify all the patches with uh, with the iPad so if I switch to to this, you'll see it. It's you know it switches, and I can it's and you can save them to the pad. And I have uh, preset lists, so I have, for example, for Europe, since I have it all MIDI controlled, I have I can have all uh, one through 99 uh, pre, uh, you know patches in in, in here. Um, but for if I'm since I'm doing this manually, I have to I have to limit. So this preset range goes from one to nine. It's really really easy to program. This this device is why I love it. And I loved the lexicon, but it was you needed a degree in math to get through it. So I just and I'm not smart enough. So uh, uh, yeah, so that's I have I have a couple of set set lists, and I can just dump them into the pedal if I'm going to do a movie or go to Europe to fix it. Uh, this is my old uh, PS3 uh, pitch shifter, and I have so I have the PS5 and the PS3. This just just nothing sounds like this, so I just I have to use it, and it's, it's it lives on here. Um, Sam Hell, we originally did, used played a Deering banjo acoustic guitar for that sound on the album through that Super Champ. Can't travel with that. Uh, don't own the guitar. It's owned by Henry Bogdan, the original helmet bass player. So my my dear friend Andrew uh, Youssef, who, who was, uh, was a great uh, uh, photographer and journalist that passed away from cancer, um, Trent Reznor actually phoned him from stage once. Andrew and I were good friends, and he had the page out with the signature model guitar, and we jammed a, a bunch at his house before he passed away. And so when he passed, his brother wanted me to have all his pedals. So I have um, uh, a couple pedals that I you, you take with me everywhere I go. And this is so this was Andrew's, and this is how I get the kind of jangly acoustic broken banjo sound. Uh, it's great. Um, this is another Peterson. I use this as a DI uh, for my Green Bullet mic. That's the way I can mute it myself. I have control on stage, um, so the, the engineer, the front of house engineer, doesn't have to worry about it, worry about me at all because it's, it's very noisy. Here's the Green Bullet, the great Shure mic that was uh, designed for harmonica players and sounds great. I use it on a song, Sam Hell, uh, Rolo, um, So Long. There are sections and songs where you want that sort of distorted, thin, cool, old radio sound, and that's that's. Where I use um, this for, and then uh, I've been super fortunate that a great friend of mine, who's become a great friend, Jeff Alexander, the former vice president of Sennheiser Neumann, is a ridiculously huge helmet fan, and he insisted that I start using Sennheiser Neumanns. I tried the KLM106 or something, I, th I think something like that. It's an incredible mic, but I have a low, deep, weird voice, and the, the, the Sennheiser 945E has become my, my mic, and I love these. So I have a couple of them, um, and I travel everywhere I go with them. They're just phenomenal, and it's a great another company I love. My in-ears 
actually my in-ears are Sennheiser as well. My packs, uh, um, my, my, I have to use a Sennheiser. It's the RW300 or something like that, EW300, a Sennheiser packs, and my uh, my transmitter is Sennheiser as well. I use their paddle antenna because it's clear, but they're, these guys are great. It's a great, great company, and this mic is just, it's life-changing. You can hear, if I'm singing like a, a song like a, Silver Hawaiian, that's like a low, like, you know, like exaggerated lows, like, you know, the land saves the love. You can hear that or any screaming, it handles everything. I played, I've sang through several mics, and years ago I was endorsed by another company, and I blew up a capsule like every week, and I just kind of decided to leave them, and, and so that's why I'm tried and true to these guys. I think that's it. I think that's all the, the, these, the, the gear I got. Cool. Well, this, I'm Paige Hamilton from Helmet. I'm really, and I've, Really love talking about my gear. It's so much fun, and, I, and thanks for thanks for watching. We're uh, we're on tour with Prong right now, and we're going to be on tour with Bush this summer, and then over to Europe for some festivals. And if you get a chance to check us out, please come and see us. Uh, there's uh, helmetmusic.com has all the dates on it, and all, and all pertinent information. Also, pagehamilton.com, I think. Sorry, uh, website. Also, pagehamiltonart.com is the this art project that I've done with uh, my, my buddy's scene four in Los Angeles. And there's some cool art stuff on there. We're going to release seven inch covers with my artwork on it. And um, it's, you know, I think, I think that's it. I think it's pagehamilton.com. Page Hamilton Art for sure. Pagehamiltonart.com is the art one. But yeah, you can Google us or something. I don't know. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks.